here are 5 CSS mistakes that you must stop doing in order to improve your CSS. And the first problem that I see a lot, people don't understand the weight of selectors. Here is the example. We have here UL with ID navigation, Lee and a href inside. And on the right we have styling for it. UL, navigation, Lee A, and here the color is red. As you can see here it is red and it is working just fine. But actually this code is not the best one. But maybe it is already written inside project that you got. But as a good developer you want to do that correctly and you are adding here a class to the link. Let's name it link and in the second one also. Now here on the right we can write styling for our link and here we just want to change our color to blue. But as you can see in browser it didn't work and at this moment you for sure want to write important and forget about it. But this is a bad approach because actually on the right you can see that your color blue is not applied and red is still winning. Why is that? Because the weight of these all selectors are bigger. Here we have just one class selector and here we have UL, then ID, Lee and A and this is the bigger weight. And actually in the internet you can easily find the weight of selectors. But learning them and using them correctly is a difficult task. Which brings us to the second problem. People are not trying to organize their CSS. The whole CSS is global and all your classes, IDs, tags, everything is global. Which actually means you must structure it somehow. And there are different methodologies that you can use in order to organize your CSS. For example, let's try to update this example. And actually here I want to show you BAM methodology, but you have also different ones, like for example Smy CSS and a lot of others. For example here instead of ID, we would like to write a class navigation. This is essentially our block, which is a reusable part of our application. Now here inside Lee, if we want to style it, we are writing navigation to underscores element. In this case here we are defining it like a child element. And in the case with the link we will write here navigation to underscores link. With such organization our global styling is easily maintainable and our structure of CSS is flat. By that we can jump here and what we want to style is navigation link. This is why here we can just write not link but navigation to underscores link. And if we want to style for some reason navigation element, we will write CSS for it. We don't have any nesting at all and we always write just flat CSS. If you are using some frontend framework like React, Angular or Vue, then you are getting isolated styles directly inside your component and you don't need to think about it. But you still need to think about nice naming so it is clear for everybody who read your component. The next problem that I see quite a lot, people are relying on CSS frameworks too much. For example, the most popular here would be Bootstrap and actually the latest version is not the bad one. Because here we have things like MB4, MB3 and all this kind of stuff which are just building blocks to write your CSS. If you are using some other frameworks, typically you will have there some predefined classes like maybe card, user, model and so on. Which actually means if you need to change something, you really must override it with important. Typically it is not customized enough even with theming. This is why when we are talking about CSS frameworks, I am a huge fan of Tailwind. Because actually this is not a framework, this is just a lot of small building blocks, so you can write just HTML without touching CSS. And this is not really CSS framework, where you are getting just some classes with lots of CSS inside and you need to overwrite something. Here you are just building what you need yourself. The next problem is really important, people are duplicating CSS again and again. For example, you created a button and then you need a button in another place, you either copy paste your CSS or you just write your CSS a little bit differently, but you copy paste a lot of stuff. Which essentially means that you don't have building blocks inside your application. For example, here with our example of navigation, we can reuse this navigation or even navigation links anywhere where we need to. And you can easily create reusable things like buttons, buttons with text, with icons, which you can reuse anywhere without copy pasting the same CSS. This is why you always need to think how to organize your code and make it reusable. And the last important problem is not building responsive from the start. 
And I know this story when you just start to write your CSS, you don't really want to think about responsive and you think, okay, I will apply responsive at some point later. And actually this never happens and then at the end it is much more difficult to make it responsive than from the start. For example, as you can see here we have a registration form and this is not responsive. Here we have some fields and a button. The main point is that we can easily do this form responsive just by making our container responsive. Because the only problem is when we are making it smaller it is too big. And we can easily fix it just by tuning one container. And as you can see here for form container, I applied width 90% when our max width is less than 600 pixels. As you can see in browser, it is really working like a charm and we don't need to spend a lot of time on writing responsive styles. And actually, if you are interested to know how to build a Twitter page from scratch with CSS, make sure to check this video also.